Okay, so we've now built devices that can do uh, combinational mathematics. Uh, and so we can add two numbers together, we can subtract them, and as it turns out, the subtraction is basically the same as the addition, uh, as long as we can invent a representation of negative numbers that facilitates that. And we did. Two's complement does that. It allows us to add or to subtract without actually subtracting. And so now we have a device that can add and subtract, and with a bunch of other stuff, we can subtract and add and we can do logic and we can do all sorts of things. One of the uh, mathematical functions we're going to want to do is multiplication. This is not a thing that we can do right now with the tools that we have available, so we're going to have to spend some time building out a multiplier. And there's a lot of different ways we can multiply. We can multiply in code, right? Once we build a computer that can add two numbers together and can do a bunch of other stuff, we can write a little algorithm that will multiply two numbers together. Um, that will work, but it would be nice if we had a, um, a hardware functionality that will do this. It's so core to many of the operations that we're going to do in computing that we want to be able to do this ourselves. Um, and there are, it, it's an entirely combinational function, right? If you multiply two numbers together, the result you get is the same regardless of uh, the state of the world. So two times three is always six. And so we should theoretically be able to build combinational logic to do this. What we'll find is that it is prohibitively difficult to build a combinational, a single piece of combinational logic to multiply numbers together. We could do it with addition uh, because we were able to build a bit slice. So we were able to build a single object um, that can do all of the functionality of a single slice of an addition. And it doesn't matter where that slice is in the, in the addition, we get the correct result. We can't really do that with multiplication because when you multiply two numbers together, you have to take into account all of the bits from the multiplier and all of the bits from the multiplicand in sequence. You're basically doing a combination of each bit in one number combined with all the bits in the other number. And so you have to take into account what happened before and what happened after while you're doing the process. And this is a little bit wordy, but when, when we remind you of how grade three math does multiplication, you'll remember that this is in fact a sequential process. But the result is combinational. And so what a lot of computers do these days, they just have a big lookup table for really common multiplication problems. It, it, you can't really do all of the multiplication problems in a lookup table because, I mean, if you had, a, uh, if you had eight um, bit number and you wanted to multiply two eight bit numbers together, there are 256 times 256 possible results. That's big, but it's not em enormous. If you were multiplying two 64-bit numbers together, uh, you would have 2 to the 64 times 2 to the 64 possible results, uh, which is 2 to the 128, uh, which would take up an enormous amount of space on your chip if you wanted to have a lookup table with all of those results. So in practice, we don't do that really that much. We have lookup tables for common results. And <laughs> if you want to hear a story, this is one of the challenges with one of the early chips that Intel built, the, the Pentium 4 chip had a lookup table for common division and results, and that lookup table had an error in it. Uh, and so every time you went to do that result, you got an incorrect result. Um, messy and terrible to fix, because you had to fix it in code. You had to detect that um, particular operation, detect that division, and then replace the hardware lookup with an algorithmic result. So not only was it did it take longer because it was an algorithmic result, not just a lookup, but also you had to detect that that was one you had to replace. It was a terrible problem. So lookup tables are fine if you get them right. Um, but what we want to do is build the hardware to generate the result fresh each time uh, so that we know that it's the right result. So yeah, you could implement this with combinational logic because the answer is the same regardless of the state of the universe, but it's large and complex and problematic. And in practice, we're going to do this using sequential mathematics. And you've seen a bit of sequential mathematics in the lab. You saw sequential adders. This is going to be a sequential multiplication circuit. So to do this, first we're going to re remember what multiplication looks like. This is in base 2, but it's the same process as what you learned in grade 3 and base 10, is you just put the multiplicand at the top, and then you put the multiplier below it, and then for each bit of the multiplier, for each digit of the multiplier, you're going to multiply that with the entire multiplicand and put the result down here as what we call a partial product. And then we're going to add up all the partial products, and that's going to be our full product. Um, adding a bunch of numbers together more than one number at a time is going to be tricky in our hardware, so we're going to once we generate a new partial product, we're going to add it to sort of our accumulated product as we go, and you'll see how that works. Um, but for now, let's just look at what this looks like. 
when you're doing multiplication in um, binary, it's actually a lot even simpler than multiplication in base 10 because there's only two possibilities. Either the result is zero when you multiply uh, the multiplicand by zero, or the result is just a copy of the multiplicand if you multiply it by one. So we really don't have to do any multiplication. We either put zero down or we put a copy of the multiplicand down and then we shift and add and shift and add and that's our whole process. So let's just have a look at what we're seeing here. This is 14 times 10 should give us 140. So that's 14 and that's 10. And we're gonna take each bit of the multiplier and, and sort of use that to decide whether or not to add the multiplicand to our ongoing partial products and that'll be our result. So first we say the, the first bit is zero. Zero times anything is zero, so that just goes there. The second bit is a one and that now has to be put down in this bit position because it's gotta line up with the bit position of the multiplier we're doing. So this is why we have to be careful to shift these partial products in the right direction. But really, again, it's just a copy of the multiplicand. Then we look at zero, the third bit of the multiplicand, it's a copy of the multiplicand, except it's not because zero times anything is zero. So we just put a zero down. And then we look at the last bit, which is a copy of the multiplicand. And then we add all this stuff up together. So we're just adding these together one at a time, putting them in the right place underneath the bit that they correspond to. And then we just add them up. So let's add them up and see what happens. Um, again, adding four numbers together all at once is gonna be difficult for, for our logic. So instead what we'll do is just add them add each pair of partial products at a time and then add the next one as it's available. But for now, we'll add them all up together because it's pretty straightforward. So zeros are all zero. Uh, that one's hard to see, eh, that's fine. Uh, so then we do this one, zeros are all zero. One becomes one, one becomes one. One plus one is two, which is zero carry the one, right? And then one plus one is zero carry the one. One plus one is zero and then we carry the one out to the top. And so we get 1000 zero, 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 one, one, zero, zero, which if you do the math is 140. So this is gonna be our process, uh, but we're not gonna do it on paper, we're gonna do it in hardware. And so we're gonna have to build out a structure that allows us to store an ongoing partial product as we accumulate it. We're gonna have to be able to add that to the multiplicand or to zero. And we're gonna to have to be able to shift that around to make sure that the result of that addition is in the right place for the ongoing partial product. So this is gonna take some thought. We're gonna to have to be a little bit careful about how we do this. But once we're done, we'll be able to do the same similar, not the same, but a similar process for division. And there's another process that we can do for signed multiplication. This is all unsigned or positive numbers. Uh, and we will do the same thing for signed multiplication later on in the set of videos. So what we're gonna do, is uh, in subsequent videos is we're going to build out our hardware that allows us to shift and add and accumulate the result as we go. So we're gonna need a register that can store information and shift it around. We already have that. We built a shift register back in the sequential logic section of our videos. So we'll just take one of those and drop it here. We're gonna need a device that can add two numbers together. Well, we've got that. We call it an adder. And so we take the result from the register and we're gonna add it to its accumulated next result. And we're gonna be, need to be careful about where we put stuff, but that should work okay. We're gonna need to be able to shift information around in the register. Again, we have this shift register that we built. We have this adder that we built. And then we're gonna put all this stuff together with some control logic and build a chunk of hardware that will take a number and repeatedly add and shift the result till we get the final result. And this is a neat little piece of hardware. It looks like this, we'll build it out in the next video. Um, but it's neat because it's sort of the beginning of the concept of a structure that allows control and decision making that will give us a result, which is our computer. This is a very specific purpose computer, but it is very similar to the end result that we're gonna have when we build out our general purpose computer. So in the next video, we'll walk through this device and see how it works.